Greetings for the day. So today we'll be going to the companion material generated for the for week six for the machine learning techniques course, which encompasses ridge regression, lasso regression, and various cross validation methods. Okay. So to illustrate uh, ridge regression, the effectiveness of ridge and lasso regression, we will generate a data set with some correlated features. So uh, in this uh, particular example, I am generating a hundred sample data set, each having fifty features. The first twenty-five features are uh, not correlated with each other; they are like completely uncorrelated. And the other twenty-five features, I have added some linear correlation to them. Uh, I will not be going through this code that much. I invite you to do so. But uh, the final, so if you see the correlation matrix for the data set, you can see the first twenty-five are not that correlated, which corresponds to this green color. Which is which indicates a zero correlation, and the uh, the yellow and purple colors you have here indicates a high positive or negative correlation. Now, on this uh, to to generate our labels, we have our data set. We also need this W and noise. So we'll create W to be a sparse vector with ten uh, out of the fifty features to be non-zero, and uh, and then our error vector also is, uh, with variance point one. This is point zero one because this is scale corresponds to the deviation, the standard deviation. So we'll do that, and we've created our uh, labels y. Now our goal is to find what this w is, right? Now, uh, what was covered in week five is a maximum likelihood estimation, and the maximum likelihood estimation closed form solution is as follows: x x transpose pseudo inverse x y corresponds to the um, maximum likelihood estimate. Uh, it's also called the ordinary least square estimate. And uh, now we want to make this better. So investigate the goodness of this estimator. the goodness we will uh, give it a metric and that metric is the mean squared error and the mean squared error is so if i if we consider our estimator to be w cap the mean squared error basically measures how uh, the 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 squared l2 norm uh, of the deviation between the true value w that we had generated earlier and the the estimator that we are posing now uh, according to this uh, formula if we Uh, the, this formula again can be decomposed to give it another form in terms of the bias and the variance of the estimator itself, and that decomposition is as follows. So the mean squared error can be written as the trace of the covariance matrix of our estimator plus the norm squared of the bias of our estimator. Uh, the derivation for this formula is in this cell, and so given this. we can apply this bias variance or decomposition on our uh, ordinary least squares estimator and we get that uh, for our ordinary least squares estimator uh, the bias is zero it is an unbiased estimator and hence uh, only the trace is considered uh, and the trace of covariance matrix of w hat ml which is equal to sigma squared times the trace of xx transpose inverse as shown the the lecture videos as well now we want to make our estimator better what can we do so if you want to make our in other words you want to reduce this mse value so what options do we have sigma squared is is the variance of the error and uh, the error uh, is inherent to the experimental setup itself what uh, apparatus you use to uh, measure the variables and also it comes there it is not really under the purview of a data scientist per se but uh, the trace value the trace of xx transpose inverse is a little more data oriented and we can perhaps this requires a bit more analysis the trace part and uh, in fact uh, to make mse lower you would want to reduce this trace and how would we go about reducing this trace we will first look at the the eigen values of this xx transpose inside the trace uh, we if we consider that to be lambda i uh, then then we get the trace of xx transpose inverse to just be the sum of the reciprocals of our lambda values and if we change this matrix xx transpose to xx transpose plus lambda i we are essentially increasing the eigen values by some lambda uh, we'll we'll assume or we'll fix lambda to be strictly positive and when we do that we know the reciprocal of a larger value decreases so hence this the trace of this new matrix will be uh, strictly lower than the trace of the original matrix however uh, this this does not uh, uh, this thing changes the problem that we are trying to solve initially right so here uh, the problem becomes this new thing it's not xx transpose inverse xy but uh, xx transpose plus lambda if this extra term is over there because the problem is has kind of shifted from what we initially wanted to solve we are inducing a non zero bias in our estimator and that bias happens to be this so this is a non zero bias because there is a non zero bias now now if we see look at the we uh, initially we were in pursuit of an estimator with a lower mean squared error right so here if we see what difference this makes we'll see we get this following right so the first one there is 
0 by so there is only so this is the trace of the first estimator uh, w hat ml and the second one is uh, lambda ml which is the, the ridge ridge estimator if we consider the difference we get this following expression and in this expression you can see the first two terms uh, this term is strictly greater than this term Be because this is what you change right this is the trace that you wanted to reduce so hence we will get uh, this this term which I called a here to be positive and the second one this term uh, which is the which is a square of the bias is also strictly positive and hence this is a difference of two positive values so it can either be positive or negative right so there is this trade off between the two however there the existence theorem asserts that there exists some non zero lambda for which this is uh, for which this difference is uh, is positive uh, in other words we can find the lambda such that it is it gives a lower mse as compared to our uh, normal w hat so now uh, that's 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 why we are interested in this rich solution one of the reasons okay now uh, given this formulation we, we for formulate our ridge regression problem as follows the estimator that we found happens to be the solution of this optimization problem which is the which is similar to the OLS ordinary least squares optimization problem but with this extra lambda times norm squared parameter so this is our new regression problem and uh, the closed form solution is for this uh, is correspondingly conveniently the same xx transpose plus lambda I inverse xy formula another convenient thing about this is the following so xx transpose is a scale variant scale variant of your covariance matrix hence it is a positive semi definite matrix you cannot have negative variance that is absurd so xx transpose is a positive semi definite matrix which means all your eigenvalues are uh, zero or more so it could still be zero given some variables are correlated with each other you could have zero uh, eigenvalue whereas where if you consider xx transpose plus lambda i uh, all I, where lambda is strictly positive then all your uh, eigenvalues increase by lambda in other words the smallest eigenvalue you can find would be lambda hence xx transpose plus lambda i is positive positive definite and therefore it, it is definitely invertible uh, compared to the OLS uh, estimator where we had to use the pseudo inverse to account for uh, non-invertibility or singularity here uh, we can uh, assert for a fact that the inverse definitely exists so that is another uh, convenient part about ridge estimator now we will compare how uh, uh, w hat m, lambda ml and w hat ml look so the x axis corresponds to the regularization strength or lambda and uh, these lines correspond to each weight so here we have 50 weights 50 lines because we have 50 different features for our data point and uh, as you can see as I increase the regularization strength they all uh, tend to decrease and converge to zero so this is what we are doing as we increase the re regularization strength we are sort of pulling the pulling the feature vector uh, the, the w vector more closer to the origin and uh, th that can be illustrated in this diagram all right the next paradigm for regression is uh, is lasso regression you would be interested in lasso regression when the feature selection criteria is inbuilt in the way we for formulated this how is it inbuilt because we use the l1 norm the l1 norm has lots of points and edges and these points and edges correspond to certain features being zero hence uh, hence okay not edges just points so hence uh, you are much more uh, probable of converging to a solution with sparse weights and that is what the if you require if a scenario requires that then you would use a lasso regression objective the solution for lasso again uh, if we compare the uh, compare the solutions between the normal w and lasso we get the following we see that uh, at a certain uh, after a certain point there is there are drastic changes where most of them just become zero so this is where the sparsity happens and when one of the features becomes zero the other for example this gray line when this green is becoming zero you could see this gray this gray line sort of coming back up to counteract the effect that that had so therefore lasso in this context gives sparse solutions we've discussed how uh, ridge regression and uh, lasso regression can can be used to sort of get a better approximation of our initial w but how do we choose this hyperparameter we know the the difference between the two mses of our estimators depends on lambda and but uh, there is no sort of closed form solution to to find this lambda we just know it exists that is all we know so how do we find this lambda secondly we do not have the true value of w in our hands if we do there is no problem to solve in the first place so 
how do we do this uh, how do we find this hyperparameter so there are some strategies the first one is normal validation we we'll split our data set into two uh, uh, one we'll have allotted for the validation set and the other one is for the train set so we'll use a train set to we'll sort of learn our parameters and then we will find how how well it performs on our validation set uh, and we do this for all our lambdas and on whichever data set it performs the best we will choose that to be our optimal uh, lambda the problem with this is that your uh, validation set need not really represent accurately the the problem itself and uh, it could it could be biased and hence uh, to have a much more principled approach of finding this lambda we will sort of repetitively we do this over multiple folds and that's where k fold cross validation comes so in k fold cross validation you will partition your data set into k different sets so this k uh, according to your computational sink can be set so but for example consider five sets right so i will partition my data set into five folds and out of these five folds or five small smaller data sets i will choose one data set to be my validation and i'll take the union of the other remaining four as my uh, training data set i will use a training data set to come up with parameters for my estimator and i will uh, evaluate the estimator on this validation set so i will get five five different uh, errors and i will consider the average error here to be to be the estimate of that particular round and finally out of these lambdas i will see which la uh, lambda gave me the least msc and i will uh, use that to filter out to choose the hyperparameter that is optimal when we do that we we see that it has changed right so that was uh, 0.09 something here we get a different value the final one is a lee one on cross validation now we we argued k fold uh, uh, sort of helps us to minimize the bias in the validation set itself but can we do better right so k fold we split it into five data sets in lee one out it is essentially k fold it is it is another k fold ex except it's not k fold it's n fold where, uh, k, uh, where n is the number of samples in your data set so essentially what you're doing is you're just leaving one point out of your training data set your uh, uh, out of your yeah, so and your training on n minus 1 samples and you use that uh, w to to predict on this one but one sample in your test data set and uh, rest is is the same right so and once you predict you just accumulate all your uh, uh, errors uh, find the average and use that to rank your uh, candidate hyperparameters and choose the best hyperparameter all right so we'll be going through some numericals for this uh, for this week now so the first question the following weighted vectors are learned from a six dimensional data set using linear ridge and lasso regression not necessarily in the same order so we need to find which vectors came from which paradigm so first you can see w1 has sparse weights and only lasso uh, outputs sparse weights so therefore w1 is more likely to be from the lasso regression paradigm in the second and third vectors you can uh, what ridge does is it essentially pulls your ols estimate closer to the origin and since there is ols and ridge among these two the one with the with the smaller norm would be the would correspond to the ridge solution and finally uh, since w2 is left out that is your uh, linear li ols uh, estimate right so now we'll go through a small example of what k fold cross validation is so we have 450 training samples and uh, the error here is calculated as uh, as the average of errors obtained from n1 iterations each iteration involves training a model of subset of size n2 and evaluating its performance on a disjoint subset of size n3 now we have to find what this n1 n2 n3 are now we have 450 samples and uh, so first in three fold cross validation we split our data set of 450 samples into three folds which is 150 each and in this we'll fix one of them to be our validation set and the other rest the union of the rest to be our train set we'll evaluate this on our model and we'll get some particular error so that is e1 then we will uh, change our validation set and train set to the, uh, validation becomes the first one in this case and we'll when we evaluate this we'll get another error e2 and thirdly we'll uh, change our validation again uh, repeat the process and we'll get e3 so we have a set of three errors and the average of this error will become uh, the error for this particular lambda so we have uh, n1 which is which is three iterations n2 is 300 which is the size of our training set and n3 is 150 which is the size of our test data set uh, 